Hello YouTube and welcome to Baby Jace's Iron Docks Gold Challenge Mode Updated Guide. Uh, I'm Baby Jace, the tank blood DK in this guide, and this is going to be an updated guide from my previous one as along the months since I've made those, new tricks and uh, strats and cheesy things have been updated and have come to light, so I'm, I'm just updating it, you know, to give you the easiest way possible to get these golds. Now. If you want the easiest gold possible, you're going to want a Blood Decay and a Hunter. The healer doesn't really matter, I use the Holy Paladin here. And the other DPS don't really matter, like I use a Warrior and a Unholy DK. So like, it doesn't really matter, you can really get it with most comps. Just Hunter and Blood DK are really important for challenges. Like if you want the easiest time possible, you want DK and the hunter. Well, you, you don't necessarily need a blood DK because everything that I do in this video, a, a DPS death knight could easily replace. So, no, if you don't have a blood DK, you can always get a regular DK. Like they can they can AOE grip and they can use army as well. So, either way. Now, for this instance, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to army before you you're gonna want to start the instance, and then you're gonna want to army as you're resetting the instance. And the reason why is because resetting the instance resets your army of the dead, and you this will let you have two armies for the pull at the start, and this will allow you to pull a lot of mobs and have two army of the deads taunting everything, and it makes the pull a lot easier. So, like here. I'm in an army and then we're going to reset and then I accidentally did a little late so my army actually goes away so you can easily do it with just one army, just having two makes it a lot easier. Anyways, once you do your army reset, uh, you're going to want to mount up and you're just going to run all along here the, where you see. Well, make careful, don't pull that ogron, but you want to pull that pack in front of you, the one in front of the ogron, the one to the left the other pack that's next to the first one you pulled, and these guys over here in the corner. And then you're gonna to wanna to go around the corner and you know put your defile down and just you know army again and just start AOing everything. You're gonna to wanna to grip here too. See how I grip? You just wanna grip everything together and you're gonna to wanna to lust. And you just wanna use every cooldown you have here. You need to nuke these as fast as you can. The faster you kill them, the better because then you won't waste so much time having to reheal everyone. Everyone's at like 10% HP if you're not a resto druid. But as you can see here, this pack dies incredibly fast. So you're going to want to use a lot of cooldowns here. I used uh, I used almost everything. I didn't use Icebound, thankfully, but if you have to, use everything there. Now once you've dealt with that pack, you're going to go ahead and pull Champion Druna. And be careful, since you did use a lot of cooldowns, you don't really want to pull Champion Druna and the Siege Master. The Siege Master does a lot of damage, especially if you have two melee like how we did. So you don't want to pull him with those with this pack because it's it's just a really nasty pack. Like it's really nasty. But uh, once you've cleared this or when when they're almost pretty much dead, you can just go ahead and go to the next pack. So it can take a little longer than I'd like, but it's alright. It's not really a big deal, but once we kill that, go straight to Siege Master, pull these guys together, I grip that guy in, and just, you know, go back to AoEing, again, rotate cooldowns if you have to, whatever cooldowns you didn't use on that uh, first pull, you, you can definitely use them here, you can even pull those two technicians to the side, you don't have to, but it, uh, it definitely makes it easier, I almost died here, Jesus, but it, make, it makes it, uh, it's faster if you pull those two with this, but it is more intensive healing. Now if you die here, it's okay. You can just release, run back in. You're gonna wanna die anyways because you need to reset your lust since you wanna lust on the boss. Uh, here we lost our hunter, our DK, and our warrior, so our three DPS reset their lust on this pole. Oh, it wasn't on purpose, but if they wouldn't have died, we all would have died anyways. We would have specifically pulled the boss and let it kill us, or, or pulled something and let it kill us. It doesn't really matter what you do, it just, you know, you, know, you want to reset lust on everyone, it makes it easier because you can lust that first pull, and lust the boss. Once you've killed uh, those mobs there, you should have around 26-ish mobs. I'm pretty sure this is, I think you need 26, maybe you need, need 25 or 24, but 26 is a good number come here, you pull the boss over here, you do the boss like how you normally would, uh, be careful with his fear, don't hit the boss when he has his fear going, 
don't, uh, don't stand in the fire. Kill the dog. The dog is the priority, not the boss. The dog has to die as fast as it can. Once you... It's, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward boss. It's, it's exactly like on it is on Heroic, just everything does more damage, so... Just be careful, don't stand in the fire, and, you know, it's a pretty easy boss. Now, if you weren't aware on this boss, I completely forgot, but if you are a Death Knight and you Soul Reaper the boss, and the Soul Reaper is still on him when he puts his shield up, it will actually fear you, so be very careful with that. So you see here, I don't even hit the boss and I manage to get feared, and that's because of that Soul Reaper. So just, you know, be careful. I didn't die, but I mean, it's possible you can die. If you have them, you can throw a piece down to heal up real quick. If not, you know, your healer just has to heal you. Uh, just make sure when you do go uh, through these Ogrons, you just right click off all of your hots or you have a macro that, for whatever healer you have, that gets rid of hots because you don't want the healer to get aggro on these Ogrons and they will if you have hots on you. And you want them to chase you, not, not your healer, right? I mean, you just pull them to this first Iron Star. Iron Star should kill both of them. You don't need them really. I mean, I, I, we got kill count on them, but you, you don't. It's not important. Uh, just use your second Iron Star, go down, clear as much as you can, then mount up. Don't use the third Iron Star yet. And the reason being is because you're going to pull the Ogron that's coming up here and a, a bunch of the trash mobs, and you're going to pull them back and kill them with the Iron Star. So we, we screwed up here and pulled these mobs. This actually makes it a lot harder. Try not to pull them or try to have them dead with the second uh, Iron Star. Or use the third Iron Star and then use the second one to kill to do the trick. But just leave one of your Iron Stars up. See our hunter here, he pulled with misdirect, I'm sure. Put a binding shot here. Just don't don't die to this uh, Ogron. Uh, he hits really, really hard, so just be be aware. That he hits very hard, and you cannot die here. As you can see, I pull it all the way back, and I'm just waiting for the Iron Star now to come. I can't actually see it, but it eventually does show itself. See, I don't even know that it's there, but apparently it was there. And there's sometimes it doesn't kill all of them, so you just gotta finish off whatever was left. I'm just kind of dragging it along as we go. Alright, once you get here, just like on Heroic, do not run out there during the fire thing. I'm okay to do that. I'm a tank and I had AMS, even though I didn't use AMS. I'm still a tank, so I should be fine. Our DPS DK went with me and wasn't so lucky. And I had to B-res him, so again, you know, just wait. You have plenty of time. So just go ahead and wait for the fire to pass. And you, you can pull this, you can pull the Ogron with this, or you can just pull this by itself. This. Uh, pack does hurt, especially if you have double melee, so we waited for them to be mostly dead and then we pulled the Ogron, because the Ogron hurts your tank a lot, and that means your healer has to focus healing on the tank rather than healing the rest of your melee that are getting destroyed by those spinning blades. Once you've killed all those mobs though, you can just drag the Ogron across when, when the fire isn't being shot out there, and just position him so that when the fire does, or when the missiles come, that they are hitting the Ogron and doing some damage. I mean, you might as well get some damage on them, right? I mean, you can AMS too and soak that way. Our uh, DK died again because he was out there. Don't, don't do it unless you're a tank. It's not worth it. No, we just had the resin real quick. Again, you have plenty of time. So just be careful. Don't die. Dying wastes a lot of time. But I mean, even if you have to res someone, you still have so much time to complete Iron Docks that it's okay. It's one of the easier ones. 
Just go to this next pole, the file, grip them all up together and just burn them down. Not, not hard of a pull at all. Be careful for the oil. You don't want to stand in it. It stuns you every time you use an ability, just like on Heroic. So, again, very careful with that oil. Once you've killed this back, go ahead and round the corner. Be careful. Son Usually, he stops firing. We actually had a pull where he kept firing and two people died. So just be careful. I mean, if he's firing, don't run out there. It's not worth it. Now, this boss is actually very simple, and this is where your hunter is going to come into play. Uh, make sure you're focusing the guy casting Blood Bolt. You can Dark Sim it. It does do damage. It doesn't really do a lot, but I mean, it is worth using. But if you are a hunter on this fight, Macog Ember Blade will do Fire Waves, and these Fire Waves can actually be deterrence reflected back onto Macog Ember Blade. As you can see there, our hunter actually went through the Fire Blades with deterrence and this puts a dot on macaw as you can see here we're not even touching him and he's already at 40 percent hp like he is getting destroyed so yeah just make sure you're not the uh, you don't need to touch him like he just dies you, you don't need any damage on him so you just keep dpsing the the blood shield dude and then when he puts his shield up just get on nisa and then when blood shield goes away get back on him uh, one thing I want to note here, you need one B res after this fight. So if someone dies and you only have one battle res, do not use it. And that's because you're going to want to use it uh, after this boss. There's, you can just run through the entire hallway and die with a B res on the healer and the healer just reses everyone. And this allows you to not deal with any of the trash as that trash is very time consuming. So as you see here, we only had one B-Res left, which is from the other Death Knight, and we don't res our warrior. And it doesn't matter, because once this boss dies, the warrior can release and he ends up right there. So again, you need one battle res. Do not waste your battle res. Warrior released, he's right here. We're all going to mount up. And the goal here is the tank goes first, but... Everyone needs to just get to as far as they can. Note, these mobs will do damage to you as you're going along. So, not really much you can do about that. Just hope you don't die too far away. Uh, because if, if you die too far away, you obviously cannot be BRC. I'm worried about our paladin here. I'm like, uh, you know, he looks like he's dying. And he does die, but lucky, f I mean, wherever you battle us from, that's where they get spawned. So, uh, I don't make it. But the goal is you want you want the healer to die or whoever can res to die and then have your B-Rezzer res them, like B-Rez them. So our, our DK b res our healer, and you know, everyone died in the Hunter Fane death. They all reset. They're running away. We weren't entirely sure where we b res from, so we didn't take it right away, but we later found out we could have taken it immediately because our DPS DK b res well enough away from those mobs. So you see Paladin b res right there. He comes in, he's gonna start uh, just manually resing every single one of us. And this is actually a huge time saver because all, all that trash just takes way too long and you already got your kill count from all those mobs you pulled at the start. So just don't even, don't even bother with those mobs. Like that hallway is just such a waste of time. Once you're rest up, go ahead and drop a feast and eat from it. Again, you know, it's, you have plenty of time, and it'll, the feast will make the bosses a bit easier. Now, a thing to note on this boss, the wyvern or the, uh, the bird thing, you can CC it. Uh, we were having some trouble with the uh, frost trap on it, so we decided to just kick it. Like, you don't even need to focus it down, just keep on the boss, don't even touch the bird, like, it really doesn't matter. And, like, you know, like I said, we had a three-person rotation for it. Uh, like, I would kick first, and the, the other Death Knight would kick, and then the warrior would kick, and then it was just a three-man rotation, like, it really doesn't matter. 
I mean, you, you can nuke it down, and you'll still have plenty of time to complete this dungeon, but if you just don't have, if you don't want to, you can just kick it and ignore it, and it'll eventually die to it. just cleave in general. Like, blood boil, disease cleave, defile, like, it'll eventually just die. Now, if this boss is, like, over here pretty far away from the other cages on the other side, just do what I do. I drag them out in the middle because this boss loves to jump super far away from wherever you are. And the closer you are to wherever he's going to jump to, the better, because that means you're, you're DPSing him faster and you are interrupting that ad easier. See? Jumps far away and this boss always does that. I hate him. Just bring him back to the bird and just sit here and see, I got this first kick. And we're just still DPSing the boss, not really focusing on the bird. You just, you know, just interrupt it. It doesn't do anything outside if it's just being interrupted. Once you've killed the boss, the bird will go away. So don't even worry about it. Like, it doesn't do anything. Just run away. Make sure you don't second pot on that boss either because you want to have your pot for this boss. And if you second pot, then you have to wait a minute. And it makes burning this boss a little bit harder if you don't have a pot on the pole. But uh, and make sure you don't use your three minutes on that last boss either. You want it for this boss. So just go ahead and use all of your three minutes. Use everything. Pre-pot, lust, everything. Just nuke Skolok. Ignore Koromar. He does nothing. You just have to nuke into Skolok, get him as low as you can, for when he does his giant knockback, um, you can kill him before he does a second one. That's pretty much the goal here. I mean, if you can kill him before he does the knockback, that's really good. But I think you need you need like like if you have a if you have a resto druid, he can go moonkin on this boss if your DK tank is good enough, and you can just have four DPS and a tank on this boss and you will kill it so fast that you won't even get a barrage but if you do get a barrage just go to the left and have a hunter like deterrence and run through if you don't have an immunity you will die to his barrage it does so much damage so just if you don't have an immunity just hide it's not a big deal have a hunter deterrence and run through you know double deterrence whatever doesn't really matter and then uh this boss should die before his next Grand Smash. If you get a second one, just repeat it again. Uh, maybe you might need to use someone else who has an immunity, but if I mean, if you don't have one, you just have to kind of inch your way up. Kind of sucks, but I mean, what can you do? It's a huge time waste as well. So just you know, make sure you kill, make sure you kill this guy in one go. See, we had about seven seconds left, and we we were able to kill it, and you know, we didn't really have too many bursty classes like Death Knight. DPS DK is not really bursty, so it's not a not a big deal. But I mean, once Skullock dies, this fight's basically over. Hopefully, you got gold relatively quickly. The hardest part is the beginning. We wiped at the beginning maybe four times, and once we actually got it down, which was on this pole, it it was just, just a one shot. Like, this instance is incredibly easy. Now, if you find these guides helpful, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I can answer most questions. Um, if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave that in the comment. Uh, so again, subscribe. It really helps me make, make more videos. And uh, see you with the other six uh, challenge modes, or seven if you this is the first one you're doing.